I really enjoy making seasonal spreads for my bullet journals, so today let's go through making my autumn spread. This page in my sketchbook is the rough draft, both of the quote and of the um, picture itself. I use just a random piece of drawing paper that one of my kids had. It's like 9 by 12, I think. And I usually, I cut it in half, and I wasn't even thinking that cutting it in half was not the size of my bullet journal. So I had done the rough draft that you see here, and I was going to use my light box and just trace it onto the marker paper, but then I realized because the paper wasn't the right size, the scale was completely off. So then I had to make another draft on the marker paper. And this is what you see me inking here. <clears throat> this spread was inspired by two of my favorite sort of fantastic or mystical or fairy tale artists in the case of one of them. Uh, Adrian Segur and Janie Olson. And they both include a lot of insects in their art and so I put that dead leaf butterfly on there. Dead leaf butterflies are really cool because they have that blue blue and tan color on the top of their wings but then when their wings are folded up they look exactly like a dead leaf and so that's one of my favorite autumn butterflies. And then Janie Olsen frequently includes arrows in her art and so that's the reason for the arrow. And I just like crows overall, especially in autumn when they are flying around in the oaks and cawing a lot. So that was the inspiration for this spread. Other elements include the antlers on the crow. That's something that Janie Olsen frequently does. And all the gems falling around that you'll see once I start coloring this are um, inspired by Adrian Segur. The crescent moon is another symbol I like to use a lot in autumn drawings, especially I put a little bit of Celtic knotwork on this one, and there's some crystals, and there's a little hanging vial of potions, and I just wanted this overall spread to be sort of mystical and magical, which is how I feel about autumn. It's my favorite season, can you tell? I've put information about both Janie Olson and Adrian Segur in the descriptions if you're interested in either of those artists. They're both amazing and I'm just in awe of their art. This is my Adrian Segur fairy tale book that um, is pretty well loved and she is a major influence on the kind of art I like. Um, I think I'm pronouncing that correctly, but the illustrations in this book are just completely gorgeous. Um, uh, and here, let me see if I can find it. Yeah, Little Red Riding Hood and the Wolf. This is the one on the cover. Here's a full, full spread. She always includes some sort of bugs in her pictures. Uh, so that's sort of the reason why I included that dead leaf butterfly in my spread. Let me see. Here's another uh, full size one. This is Thumbelina. Like I said, there's always a bug of some sort. Here's one being caught in her pictures and I just really love that. And I'm trying to find um, let's see, the one that inspired all the jewels in my spread is a fairy tale called Silver Shod and I can't seem to find it. Now oh, here's another beautiful one. There's the bug. <laughs> oh, this is it. So yeah, this is one of my favorite fairy tales ever, and I just love this illustration here. 
Um, so yeah, Adrian Sigur is one of my artistic inspirations, and this is the fairy tale book. And I'm pretty sure this is available on Amazon. I will check and put a link if it is, because I think I sent it to one of my friends in recent years. Now I'm about to pull out the Copics, and so these cutting boards, they're really, really thin, and I got them for like a dollar a piece, I want to say, at Tuesday morning or someplace like that, and I like using them as backing for things that might bleed through, so I have four of these, and it works really well when I'm doing Copic work or ink or anything that might go through. I put them on these cutting boards. In the color scheme I wanted for this, I wanted sort of green and purple and brown to be the over the overwhelming colors. So the background I just made sort of a, a muted green and then I made that branch a brown color and then all those crystals are the purple. And so that's the color combo I wanted for this spread and also that's what I ended up doing for the quote. Now I'm just going to go through with my Copics and pull out ones that seem like they're going to work with the color scheme I have in mind and so let's listen to some nice music. done and I'm starting to embellish with some metallic jelly rolls that you see there and then I'm going to clip the corners so they're rounded off like my bullet journal is and so this will fit nicely into the pages of my bullet journal. Here's the final version of the illustration with all the little magical details and I'm super pumped about how this looks. 
Now comes the, the, the dreaded time where I try to paste this into my journal or without messing anything up. And I had to pound on it a little bit to get it to go ahead and stick. And here I'm lettering the quote. I think the quote's from Pan's Labyrinth. That's what it, um, I got it from Pinterest. And there was a picture from Pan's Labyrinth. And the quote says, I've had so many names, old names, that only the wind and the trees can pronounce. And I really like that. And I thought that fit in with the sort of mystical vibe I have going with this whole spread. Here's the final product and I'm really pleased with how it came out. It's the perfect autumn colors, autumn vibe, the perfect sort of mystical spread that I was going for. Thanks for watching. Hit like, subscribe, ring the bell for notification, and as always, don't be afraid to take a left. Bye! Mm -hmm.